All right, YouTube Repo Man 64. I got a bunch of emails and texts this morning asking me if I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not in the hospital. I uh, One of the managers at the store that I work at is at a different store, so I've had to fill in. So I've, I have to work nine straight days, and uh, studying this and work is, is a bit difficult. And so since I have bills to pay, I have to, uh, I have to work. So anyway, I'm fine. Everything's cool. I uh, have been working on a video uh, just uh, over the past uh, week, uh, putting screenshots up, and I'll go over it with you. And uh, this thing's blowing everywhere. Turn the fan on so the bugs stop attacking me. All right, let me get into the pictures. And uh, what I want to do is, and, and I've heard this uh, through uh, several, I listened to all the videos during the day while I'm at work. And, the the problem is there's there's it, it's so many levels of a problem. The problem is we don't know what calendar is right. I think mine is, but even if mine is, which is who knows, what date is the rapture? We have all these events that happen throughout the year, and we can assign a very good rapture date to that date that we see happening. But is it still the rapture date? No, because it's passed every single time. As a matter of fact, in my last video, I said this, that, that the, and I was tongue in cheek, and uh, a lot of people <laughs> were upset. I was just being funny, but the rapture will not occur on the full moon. And it didn't, which makes me right. So that kind of makes me the most right watchman of the past decade it did not happen <laughs> so i but again tongue in cheek you know i was just i don't think the moon has anything to do with the head of the year the head of the month it never has as a matter of fact it, again like i've said so many times if you look at the flood which is what we're going to the flood's the only um event in the bible and i believe it's why god referenced the flood it's the only event in the Bible where it gives exact days or day counts from an exact day. And you can literally go on to, anybody can, and go on to a time. You just have to know when the flood occurred. We all agree that it's sometime in November, October. I think it happened on Halloween. I think that's why the entire planet looks at Halloween as a evil day because it was god destroyed this entire planet and every culture has from what i can tell an event that happens right around halloween and i think that's the day of the flood then we have extra biblical uh accounts in jubilees where it says that it happened uh on the uh all saints day uh, around the flood i uh, mean around halloween so uh that being said is it, uh, are the other channels correct that we just can't know? No, they're not correct. Are they correct that um, one of these timelines could be correct? Yes, one of them could be. I think it's this one, but it doesn't make it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, does it? Does it really matter if the timeline is correct in that as long as the Hebrew dates are correct? Once we know the Hebrew dates are all set, which I'll show you with Enoch's, um, with Mo, <laughs> Noah's flood, um, when do you assign the head of the year? That's the big question. It's not the moon. Uh, you can't use the moon. If you use the moon and say the, the you know the sliver of the moon is the first of the month, and you go five months, you wind up with 147.5 days. It, the Bible clearly says that from when the flood began, 150 days later, you land. It says that that's the day the water began to recede. That's the day Jesus died on the cross. He gave up the ghost. And in the seventh month, the 17th day is the day that um, the ark rested on Mount Ararat, reversed the curse. That's what Jesus did. We are that Those two dates are assigned to the cross and to the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you use the moon, you will not reach the 150 and the 153rd day. You can't do it. 
mathematically it can't be done. And my mind works on mathematics. Like it, my mind works on this must make sense. So we must put it down. Now, Cool Cat Promise, and he said this. I listened to about 15 minutes of his video, a bunch of gibberish. His dates are moving around. I don't want to dog the guy out, but he really enjoys dogging me out on his program. And uh, he said very clearly, and I'm going to hold him to this, that if the rapture does not occur today, um, then he is going to shut his channel down and subscribe to my channel, send all of his subscribers over to mine. Welcome. Welcome to Repo Man 64. Well, I mean, you still have a few hours, so I hope you're right. I, I'm not going to go to heaven going, he was right. That was wrong. I'm not, that's not going to happen. I'll be very happy to go on any given day, but I won't make the claim that, uh, I'm right and everyone else is wrong and won't make that claim either. So that being said, let's get into the video again. I'm fine. I haven't shaved. I've been working. You have no idea. This job is very work intensive. All right. Pictures. Let's start here real quick. I've pulled some Bible verses that shows that we must support Israel. And we must. We must stand behind Israel. I am getting emails from people saying, well, the people that are there aren't actually Jewish. To make that statement is to make the statement that we're not in the fig tree generation, that this group of people took over Israel against the will of God in 1948 has no bearing on the 70 years and 80 years, which is ridiculous. These people are making YouTube channels and coming on their channels, and, and they're actually finding Jewish people who are against what's going on. I don't care who you find. I don't care who you use. I don't care what calendar you're using. I don't care if you say the people that are there are not actually Jewish, that there's something else. You can keep attempting to send me this stuff, and I will throw it away. God did not make a mistake in 1948. The people that are there are the ones that are supposed to be there. And those are the people that we will pray for and we will back up. There is no mistake when it comes to God. So we cannot view those types of things and cast doubt into what's happening right now. Ross over at New News is correct. I like his channel and he is equating this thing that's going on, this war that's going on in Israel with the peace and safety. And I like what he's saying. Everyone's coming at this at a different aspect. Does Do any of us know when the rapture date is? We don't exactly know, but what, what, what are we doing? We're getting more intimate with our Lord and we are studying like we are supposed to. We are learning more and more about him every day. And you can say with confidence, on a thing that you have learned to somebody else who knows nothing. And that's the point of, of education is you always have somebody who knows more than somebody else teaching something. I'm always learning. I'm always learning new things. I can't wait to learn something new. And I listen to all these channels to learn new things. Yes, even to Cool Cat, he does have good information. He has the wrong attitude. He does have good information. And as of today, his channel will be shut down and he is coming to subscribe to mine and send all of his YouTube people over here. So it'll be uh, I'm, you're going to see my YouTube double. It's going to be great. You guys know I'm joking, right? Tongue in cheek. <laughs> I'm just having fun because the guy literally says my name in his videos about like. Jesus' name is used less in his videos than mine. So I just I just wanted to address that. Hopefully everybody sees the humor in that. Okay, back to the, the pictures. So we will support Israel. We will pray for Israel. <clears throat> and we will stand behind Israel in every possible way, period. No, no doubts. No, those aren't the people. Uh, all that's none of that. We will just back them up because that's what God said to do. All right. 
Now, today I wanted to get into, yeah, the timeline, because that's my piece of the puzzle. This is what I work on. And we're going to go through the flood. The flood has exact dates. Up here at the top, um, Sister Sandy, you know, put this all together for me. I had this all on a piece of, a huge piece of paper, and I had it all written out. And she sat down one day out of the kindness of her heart and put all this together. And as I go through year after year, more study, more listening to other people, uh, and, and see why their dates are slightly different than mine. I come to conclusions like down here. I had Jesus started his ministry on Tisha B'Av. Somebody had a good uh, explanation as to why that was. I realized it was not a good explanation. And I moved it over here to where this cross is. He actually started his ministry after the 40 days of being tempted by the devil. Some will argue it started before that when Jesus was baptized. Jesus was baptized on a low one. I have August 15th. But I'm not going to focus on the Gregorian dates as much as uh, on the date, the Hebrew date. How many days are in each month? Really quickly, right here. There are 30 days in Nisan, 30 days in Ayar, and 31 in Sivan. There is, this is the only way that you can make for a 364 day year. And we have this phantom day because the Gregorian calendar is 365, and I've assigned it right here on September. I should have actually been September 13, 14. September 15th is the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, so let me get back into the flood. These are solid dates. The Bible is super clear on when these dates happen. It's either a date, or it's a day count from that date, or a day count to another date that it gives. Noah sits at the ark door for seven days. It does not give us an exact day, but it does give us an exact day the flood begins. It began on the second month and 17th day. So you would count back seven days, eight days inclusive, meaning you would count the beginning day and the end day. So let's say the flood began on a Sunday. That means Noah went into the ark on a Sunday. Eight days later, the flood began, or seven days. If you're, if you're standing there on Sunday and you count Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'll have seven days. But if you count the day that he told you to go in, you'll have eight. So it gets a little sticky in there for people to understand that point. Sunday, Noah goes into the ark, and he sits at the doorway with the door open. He loads the ark. His grandfather, Methuselah, dies. He dies at 969 years old. Now we have a solid date. The flood begins in the second month and 17th day of Cheshvan. Cheshvan 17, God shuts the door. The ark's already been loaded. Noah's been sitting there for seven days, just like us, sitting out here. All right, when's, it, when's this going to begin? You said it was, people must have been, look, he goes into the ark. All the animals go in there. All these people are watching. What are they doing? Uh, hold on a second. This might be a real thing. Yes, we're out in the middle of the desert. It doesn't rain. We've never seen rain. We don't even know what it looks like. Uh, we're told this huge deluge is coming to drown us. All the animals, miraculously, these ant, they're all they're all baby animals. They're not huge, but all these animals go into this ark, or he carries the eggs in there. The eggs, everything stays the age they were when they went in. We get that description of when the Israelites were walking around the desert for 40 years. Their clothes never got old. They never got dirty. They stayed on their backs for the entire 40, 40 years, and, and nothing ever happened. Same thing with the animals. The eggs, they took the ostrich eggs in there. They didn't take an ostrich in there. They took the ostrich eggs in there. They took the tiny animals as they were born in there. And the, it was a lot, and people are like, how are you going to fit? Mathematically, it's not, it is if they're babies. But at any rate, I, I digress. He goes in there. He's sitting there for seven days, and everybody's laughing at him. He knows it's about to begin because God told him. He knows it's about to begin, begin because all these animals went in, and he's sitting in the doorway of a huge boat that he just built, that he just finished building. He knows this is about to get, but everybody on the outside is laughing at it. They don't know. They think it's a joke. 
even though they saw Methuselah die and they knew what Methuselah's death meant. Methuselah's death meant that they were going to die. He was the most protected, well-fed guy on the face of the earth because they knew that when he died, they died. And yet they still didn't believe. In their pride, they still didn't believe. They sat out there laughing at Noah. Until when? Until the door was shut and the rain began. As a matter of fact, it records that the rain began and then he shut the door. Like Noah's sitting there, he's like, all right, it's raining and this door's really heavy. I can't close it. It's huge. Uh, so God shuts the door. We have an exact date, Cheshvan 17, which I have assigned to Halloween, the night of October the 31st, becoming November the 1st, All Saints Day. The Bible gives a day count after that. It rained and the water went up. He went up for 40 days and 40 nights. But then the Bible says that after 150 days, God remembered Noah and he stopped the rain. This is where the water begins to subside. Remember, the ark, I think, was 15 cubits in the water, like from, from where the water level was to below. Or he was 15 cubits above the highest mountain, which is not too far. So if you do the math on how far the boat was down into the water and how far the water was above that mountain, he was literally three feet above Mount Ararat. So when the water began to recede after 150 days, Three days later, and remember, the water begins to subside. That's Jesus dying on the cross. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon on March, 20, uh, March 30th, the water began to subside. Or we would say the first month for us and the 14th day. For Noah, it would have been the seventh month and 14th day. Then the Bible gives us an exact day. Exact day. There are no moons explained in any of this. The exact day the ark rested was the seventh month and 17th day. It equates to the first month and 17th day, which is when Jesus rose from the grave. The ark rested on Mount Ararat, reversed the curse. Jesus reversed the curse of our eternal damnation, which was going to happen unless he went to the cross to pay for our sins. We continue forward. Date number six that it gives us about the flood is the tops of the mountains are seen. That is the 10th month right here. I have them all circled or I mean, Sandy did. I, I, I uh, Sister Sandy, did. I had them circled on mine, but she point number six is the Bible records in the 10th month and the first day of the month, the ark, uh, the tops of the mountains are seen 10th month. For Noah is Tammuz. Tammuz, one. Okay, Tevet. Sorry, did I do that wrong? Tammuz, one, the fourth month for Noah. I said Moses. Noah, Tevet is Tammuz. But we're looking at Tammuz because to us it's the tenth month. To Noah, it's the fourth month. He's been up there for four months. So Tammuz, one. Tops of the mountains are seen by Noah. We continue on. What happens after the tops of the mountains are seen? Well, it says in the Bible that, and I probably should have put that on here as number seven, honestly, because it says that down here, that after the tops of the mountains were seen, where's that back here? I don't want to zoom in. Number six, where's point number six? Where'd you go? There it is. Tops of the mountain scene. It says now down here in yellow at the bottom of my sideways graph. It says that for 40 days, after 40 days, the tops of the mountains are seen. He released. He sat in there for 40 days and he released the raven and the dove. Now, mathematically, when you put from Tammuz one and you go 40 days, it's the ninth of Av. If you're inclusive, it would be the 10th of all, but it's the 9th of all. Tisha B'Av is the day that the raven and the dove were released, period. That's, there's no going around it. The Bible is perfectly clear on how far the day counts are apart. So he releases it. He comes back. 
Seven days later, on number eight, he releases the dove because the raven doesn't come back, but the dove comes back with nothing. On, on uh, date number eight, the dove returns with an olive branch. Seven days later, he releases the exact day count. Seven days later, he released the dove again. The dove did not return. What happened after the dove does not return? He sat again in the ark since the dove does not return. 40 days until when? The Bible says in the first month and on the first day, Noah removes the covering. It is now Noah's new year. This is the count of the Jubilees. The Jubilees will always count from September. It is not Rosh Hashanah anymore. But it, currently it is at this point, but in Exodus 12, God will change Rosh Hashanah to the Head of, Rosh Hashanah just means head of the year. He changed the head of the year to uh, to uh, Nissan 1. All right, so we saw the dove doesn't return. We see that Noah removes the covering on this day. Oh, by the way, let me go back here. Uh, point number six, the tops of the mountains are seen. He sits for 40 days. He releases the dove and the raven on uh, the 9th of Av, on Tubiav, on the 15th of Av, he releases the dove and it returns with an olive branch. And then seven days later, on the 22nd of Av, the dove does not return. Okay? Noah removes the covering. You see that that happens on the first month and first day for him, which for us, it's September the 5th. Uh, I shouldn't say September because we're not trying to Push the Gregorian calendar, I should say Tishri 1. Tishri 1, for me, it's September the 15th. Whatever day you begin the year on, your template is here. If you don't want to begin the year on March 17th, that's fine. You want to begin it on, let's say, I've heard this term, uh, the first sliver of the moon after the sun is in Aries, set it and forget it. So, in other words, you don't use the moon from thereafter throughout the entire year. Whatever date that is, apply all of this to that. Those dates, apply all of this to get to, let's see if it begins in April or in May, where your flood is. That's why God referenced the flood of Noah. He points us to this to work and, and reconcile these dates. Noah removes the covering on Tishri 1. Then Noah sits in that ark for 57 days. Why 57? What does 57 have to do with anything? 57 is pointing us to the first Pentecost. That's why he sat it. That's just why God references as in the days of Noah. These are the days of Noah. These are all the days of Noah. 57 days, he sits in that ark after it rested, after he removed the covering, after the water subsided. Why did he keep sitting there? Because he sits in there until he's been in there for one year and 10 days. He sits in there to show the 57 days. What are the 57 days pointing to? The 57 days are pointing to, remember, the first Pentecost will happen 57 days after the wave sheaf offering. When did the wave sheaf offering happen? It happened on the day he sees Thomas in the upper room. Why is it that? Why? He rises on the third day. He spends the day with everybody, and the day was well spent, and he goes to heaven. Why doesn't he perform the wave sheaf offering on that day, on that Sunday he rose when he disappeared in front of them and went to heaven. Why? He was in a graveyard. He was buried in a graveyard, in a tomb. Levitical law, and this is, the law is not there for us to obey it. The law is there giving us information so we understand when all of this stuff is happening. It's, it's not there. Anybody who tries to obey the law, we know. We're under grace. We don't, we, we do obey the law. By understanding it, by why things were stated. This was stated in Leviticus that you could not, a uh, priest was unclean for seven days. Jesus is who? He's the high priest. 
Did he perform the wave sheaf offering that Sunday when he rose? No, he couldn't. He was in a grave. He had to sit somewhere in heaven for seven days before he could take the two loaves of barley, not of wheat, of barley, the two wave sheaf offerings, one week later on Sunday. He was unclean for seven days. On Sunday morning, he performs a wave sheaf offering on our behalf. Anybody who tells you that he did it earlier than that, than the day he sees Thomas in the upper room, is not paying attention to the law that is written in Leviticus. He was unclean. He was in a grave. He could not do it. He did it one week later. And then in the afternoon, like the Bible says, it was afternoon when he sees Thomas in the upper room. He saw everybody on the first day. Don't touch me. He's unclean. Don't touch me. I have not risen to the Father. Who touches him? The only people that have handled him that you will read about is Luke and John. Luke and John are both the bride. John is up there already. The 144,000 are already in heaven. We are down here. There's going to be a transfer that happens. Those up there, the 144,000 virgin Jewish males that were killed for the word of God, Babies, they did nothing wrong. They were innocent. All other babies that are killed today are not killed for the word of God. They're killed because of some bizarre ritual, satanic worshiping thing that they do. But 144,000 were up there. We're down here. Boom, we're switching places. They're coming down here with their bodies that are perfect and indestructible. We're going to heaven to be hidden away for seven years uh, in our chamber. In our perfect bodies. At the end of seven years is when God will set up the millennium. The count, again, for the Jubilees is from September. For me, the last possible moment that we can go is September the 15th or Tishri 1, whatever date you assign to that. If you want to go later, just assign a later date to the beginning of your year. But for me, it's Tishri 1. We have to leave by Tishri 1. All of these dates that we find, high watch days, are nothing more than something to look at as a possible rapture scenario. And when we get to heaven, we're going to be like, why wasn't it on you know, Pentecost? Why wasn't it on a Feast of Trumpets, the last Trump? Why wasn't it on Ascension Day when you would say, he'll answer all those questions. We don't know. But here's one thing for sure. This timeline that I've been building over the past five years has become tighter and cleaner and and more interlocked than I have ever seen anybody ever make a timeline. And so I don't know the rapture date, but there are high watch days. I've never said, oh, the rapture is going to occur on this day 100 million percent. No, you can't do that because we don't know what to assign the rapture to. Now, the first Pentecost. When did the first Pentecost happen? It happened on a Sunday. It must always happen on a Sunday. It must always happen 50 days after the previous. So here we have, but the problem is in Leviticus, what it says, and this is what I did wrong. And I realized that I had, because I'm constantly working on this to make sure all the dates interlock and they are correct. And, and I said to myself, why am I, I counted the Pentecost, the 50 and seven days, like it says, from the Sabbath after, count ye 49, even unto the next day, which means it lands back on a Sunday. 57 days is, would go Sunday to Sunday. So would 50, 49 days, even unto the next day, would go Sunday to Sunday. Jesus, we know, had to have performed the wave sheaf offering after seven days because he was unclean. He was in a grave. Couldn't do it. So Sunday, he performs the wave sheaf offering. Thomas in the upper room. We begin our count. We begin our count for our first Pentecost from the wave sheaf offering that had to happen on a Sunday, and it had to happen seven days after he rose. Had to. There's no other way to do this. Then we count at the Sabbath after. It's Sunday. The Sabbath after is seven days, and then we count 49, even under the next day, and that lands you right here. First Pentecost will land you on Sivan 21. There is no other way to count it. I can't count it in. Now, the mistake I made was I applied that same rule to each of the 50-day counts for the 
following Pentecost. Remember, there are four that we read about in the Bible, and I'm going to show them to you. I could never find the fourth. I kept, I even said on here, I cannot find the fourth because when I count 57 days, it lands on a non-consequential day. Number four doesn't make sense. And number four is kind of a an obscure one, if, if, if I could say it like that. It's kind of obscure. So what do I do? I can't make it match. So all I did was put it on here. And I admit it in several videos. I says I can't I can nail down the first Pentecost. I know it's right. But after that, I can't quite nail them down because they just don't add up until I realize that Sabbath after was a wave sheaf offering thing. It had nothing to do with counting the next 50 days after the first Pentecost. Each Pentecost are 50 days apart. Not another 57 day count like I've been doing for four years. I realized that I had made a mistake. Just like here, Jesus uh, did not start his ministry on Tisha B'Av. He started it over here on uh, Day of Atonement. That's when he finished and he started when he was about 30. When did he turn 30? He turned 30 on Tabernacles. Jesus was born on Tabernacles. It's, again, the only date that interlocks. Everybody's like, ah, he was born in, on Pentecost. What are you talking about? What day do you have after he was born where you can count eight days and have him circumcised? And it's a huge event. What, what date do you have? What date do you have when you count back 40 weeks and it lands on a major event? What date do you have when you count forward the seven days and John leaves from the womb? You don't have any. You, you have to have all four of those dates in order for it to fit. And I've tried to put it everywhere uh, on the timeline. And this is the only one that actually fits. Jesus was born on Tishri 10. He was born on September. I'm sorry. I said that Tishri 15. He was born on Tishri 15, uh, which is September 30th on my timeline. Five days. Prior to his birthday, he finished being tempted by the devil, and that ended on the Day of Atonement. He was about 30 years old. Adam was 26 and a half years old when God created him. He was 33 and a half when he was kicked out of the garden seven years, two months, and uh, one month and 17 days later. Seven years, one month, 17 days later. In the second month and 17th day, Adam was kicked out of the garden on the day the flood started. You can find this in the book of Jubilees. Now, let me go back here. So I go to the first Pentecost. I've always known this is right. Sivan 21. Apply the head of your year however you want to. Uh, it, this timeline will work perfectly for you no matter what head of the year you want to use. Even if you want to use a sliver of the moon to start your head of the year, set it and forget it. But if you try to use that sliver every single month, you're going to fail. It won't work. Then I count 50 days. Sister Sandy, again, fixed the timeline and she moved it. Now, I don't know where to assign barley, wheat, wine, and oil. I don't know exactly. And then I'm hearing this from Kelly about some feast, phantom feast of new sheep. I don't even know what he's talking about. but. Uh, each of the four Pentecosts, um, barley and wheat are unique in that if they plant in the fall, Jesus, look, if this is barley, if the first Pentecost is barley, then what did Jesus wave when he went to heaven on our behalf? That's why God made two planting seasons. In the fall, they plant barley, and in the fall, they plant wheat. The barley matures faster than the wheat. When we get to heaven, there's two groups, both super important. The bride is not the most important group. We are part of the group. We are the head of the group. We're the generals, as it were. We're the uh, priests and the kings, as it were. But there's this massive group of people called a tribulation saint that will also go completing the body. <laughs> you can't. You don't want to be walking around heaven with only part of body. You want the entire body there. We're going to desire that when we get there. We're going to be looking forward to our family members, cousins, aunts, uncles, friends showing up there. The ones that didn't quite listen, that they believe, but they didn't quite listen, that will drop to their knees when they see the rapture occur, knowing exactly what just happened, throwing off everything that they thought was right 
and then coming to Jesus on Jesus' terms and not their own terms. They will complete the body of Christ. That's why there are two barley harvests. Look, everybody's like, well, the barley harvest, uh, you know, the first fruits, the first fruits, first fruits is, is the first grabbing that you just walk through a field and grab. Jesus gave us this example when him and the apostles were walking and peeling ears of corn and eating it on the Sabbath. And they were like, you're sinning on the Sabbath. He's like, I am the Sabbath. So when Jesus rose, yeah, Jesus is first fruits because he went to heaven, but he took a plethora of people with him. We assume it was 10 people. No, it was a huge number of people that he took. There had to have been people from around the planet. The only people I would imagine there were people all over the place that rose when Jesus rose. And they walked where? Into the city, being recognized by who? The others that were there. They went to heaven. They went to heaven. When did they go? They went on the first day that Jesus rose. Jesus went to heaven on that day. They sat around up there for seven days. Jesus per performs the wave sheaf offering up there. With what? With barley. Where did the barley come from? From the full planting. When was Jesus born? He was born in fall. <laughs> he brought the wave sheaf offering of barley. If barley happens here on first Pentecost, which you can read that it will happen, that's when they will bring, you know, they will they will uh, harvest the barley. Where did he get the barley from? He got it from the fall planting. It is, and the Jews have wholeheartedly uh, annihilated that uh in order so that they can ignore the fact that Jesus did the wave sheaf offering in heaven on that day, they ignore that uh, harvest that happens in spring. And guess what day they usually harvest that? March 30th, the day Jesus went to the cross, ironically. So again, it in interlocks, I believe the timeline, but I'm not asking you to. I'm asking you to apply your head of the year and see where everything lands and see if it makes any kind of sense as to where it lands all right let me get on with the pictures i don't want this to go on too long otherwise i'll have the same problem everybody else has no audio and i have to come on here live well i work until what time? yeah i work till nine and i won't be able to be on live tonight whosoever touches one that is slain with uh, a sword in the open fields or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave Shall be unclean seven days. Jesus was unclean. He did not perform the wave sheaf offering the day he rose and ascended to heaven. He did it seven days later on Sunday, the selfsame day. He came back to see Thomas in the upper room. All right. The Pentecost. This is how you count the Pentecost. The first Pentecost is June 5th. It begins at nightfall. Everything begins at nightfall. God created the planet. Uh, it, it created everything, and he said, and the night and the day were the first day. Everything starts at nightfall. That's when the day begins. So the first one is June 5th. Oops. The second one is July, 23rd, uh, July 24th, because it began at nightfall. July 24th is the second Pentecost, 50-day count. This was creation night. The third Pentecost lands perfectly on September the 11th, this is the day God created, began creation. He began creation, it says the night and the day were the first day, he began creation at nightfall on the 10th. Now this calendar is from 2022 because it actually lines up with, uh, the Gregorian calendar is actually correct in this year. I have to use this calendar to show you the day is correct. We know for a fact that on September the 11th, but we know for a fact that God began creating the planet on the first day, which is a Sunday to us, what we would call a Sunday. It's the first day. That's the day he began creation. All right. So we have a October the 29th into October the 30th. The flood began the next day, the very next day. Noah would have been sitting in the door of the ark at this period of time when this jubilee happened. Yes, I Googled it. How many Pentecost events were there? There were four. The first Pentecost on the day of Pentecost itself 
in Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit descended on the 120, I have a feeling when this began, it began in groups of, uh, of people. First Pentecost was 120 Jewish believers. Second Pentecost in Acts 8. And it's uh, Samaritan Pentecost. Uh, 8.14 says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they had Peter and John, uh, sorry, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on you. So they're believing they still don't have the Holy Spirit. Why do we pray for one another? We pray the Holy Spirit now every day is a Pentecost because the Holy Spirit's here everywhere. Every day you pray for somebody, it's a possibility that they hear and they accept. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. A Pentecost, the third Pentecost experience occurred in Acts 10 with Cornelius and the Gentiles. Wait a second. The third Pentecost is when the first Gentiles became saved. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in different languages and praising God and was the Gentile Pentecost. Speaking in tongues simply means I speak Spanish. I speak in tongues. I speak in other people's languages. I'm not Spanish, but I learned the language. I love the language and the people. So uh, I speak in tongues. I can go to a you know, Latin community and, and speak with them about God. I speak in tongues. They were speaking in languages that were not familiar to them, but God gave them that gift. I have a gift of speaking in Spanish. So, all right. And then the fourth and final kind of obscure one. Now here in Acts 19, we have something similar. When Paul placed his hands on these Ephesians, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues different languages and prophesies. So you see that I found the fourth Pentecost finally because I recognized that the day count was wrong and I fixed it. I'm always open to fix anything that somebody says. But once I recognize that it, 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 uh, it adheres to the word of God, then I keep it. The latter rain occurs just before the spring harvest and makes the grain plump and full following the latter rain, there are three distinct harvests, all three separate times to complete the annual harvest cycle. First, the barley. They're, again, barley and, and wheat are planted at the same time, but the barley matures first. The bride matures first. The tribulation saint, the wheat matures second. We are barley. We are cast into the air and the chaff blows away. The wheat goes through the tribulum. They go through tribulation. We are not the wheat. I'll say this a thousand times. But Will over Worship and Watch has found three, not rapture events, but gathering events. I mean, we've all seen it. In every single harvest, there are three. There's the first fruits, there's the main harvest, and there's the corners. The corners are to be left to the poor, which is what? That's a three-part gathering or rapture perhaps of each individual Pentecost, let's call them, or, or, or you know, barley, wheat, uh, grapes, and oil, or yeah, oil. It come, comes from the olive oil, uh, the olive uh, tree. So the latter range occurs in the annual fest first, the barley, a little while later, the wheat, and finally, the grapes. All right. So we have barley, wheat, wine, and the fourth one I'm not quite sure about. Um, is it uh, oil? Is wine and oil together? I, I don't know. I don't think so because they, they do uh, get harvested at a different time. Is that uh, Kelly's uh, Feast of New Sheep that he was? I don't know what he was talking about. So first, the barley, this is the wave sheaf offering. The first sheaf of grain could have been cut on March 30th. This is the day Jesus goes to the cross. I would surmise that when Jesus rose on April the 3rd, when he was walking around all day long, and then by evening he left 
to go to heaven to perform the to I'm sorry to sit seven days and then seven days later perform the wave sheep offering that he gathered up some some uh, some uh, how you call barley he gathered up some barley he ascended to heaven on that day and sat around for seven days with a fistful of barley two of them one for the bride one for the tribulation saint he paid it right there. He paid for the Jews. He paid for the saints. He paid for the bride. He paid for all of it at that moment. While they believed in sections in their own time, he paid for it all at the same point. March 30th, it could have been cut. In fact, the barley harvest in Israel actually began before March 30th. But starting the harvest a month later, for example, on April 20, if you wanted to start your year later, and this is why I really stick to this timeline. If you want to start your year later, uh, yeah, the barley was harvested a month, month and a half earlier. I suppose would it still be on the, you know, on the on the sheaf? I don't know if it would still be there or if it would have fallen. I don't know how that would work, but if you tried to harvest this uh, barley. Later on, it would be much too late, according to this. It probably would dry it out. Second, harvested spring barley is grown in the northern hemisphere and typically harvested in July or August, which is interesting. So the spring planting is harvested four months later. And look at the date, July or August. That's kind of what we're all looking at. Jesus took with him a barley from the full planting because it ripened around the time he was on the cross. We are also barley, but we were planted in the fall. And now here, I'm sorry, in the spring, we were planted when Jesus went to the cross. Are there not yet four months? And here we are coming up on July or August, and it's the second barley harvest. I found that. I could not find the second wheat harvest. Here's the harvest for wheat. It happens in May and June. Uh, the grape harvest happens in October, August and October. And I showed you that the third Pentecost that I show is on, uh, what was it, September the 15th, you know? So that would be this. And then you have October being uh, the fourth one. So you have... Uh, grapes there and you have olives here which is where they get olive oil from in September and November and uh, October is right in the center of that as well so I don't know where to put that one and the Lord spake unto Moses this is uh, Leviticus 23 uh, this is the feast of first fruits and uh, what yeah, you shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after this. Oh, this is the count. I was. I think that's why I highlighted that. There we go. Feast of Pentecost. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenths deals, and they shall be fine flour. And shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first. I think this is what the Aaron over at uh, at uh, God uh, God a minute has been working on the the fact that there were two loaves. I believe one loaf is for the bride, one loaf is for the saint. There's only two groups going to heaven. The Jews are not going to heaven. They will stay here and repopulate the earth. They will go into the millennium and at the end have a clear, again, like we have, a clear choice to accept Jesus or not. That is the prerequisite to be in the uh, presence of God Almighty is that you have accepted his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. So I had a problem with the word Shavuot, with the word Pentecost, with the ascension and with the descension of the Holy Spirit for us. I can't quite nail down, and I'm asking for help, that Shavuot and Pentecost and Ascension Day and Descension Day, I'll call it, or the day the Holy Spirit came down, are four events, but I don't know where to assign them. Shavuot if we say is Ascension Day, cannot be Pentecost. If we say Shavuot is the day the Holy Spirit came, then it is Pentecost because the Bible in Exodus describes Pentecost as the day the Holy Spirit came down. 
and it is a 57 day count after the wave sheep offering. So that is Pentecost. Ascension day could not have happened on Pentecost. Jesus says, I have to go. I got to go. I got to get out of here because if I don't leave in a few days here in a short while, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and that can't happen as long as I'm here. So I, I, I got to go. And so Ascension Day, is that a day all its own? There's a lot of confusion around this. Why? Because one of them is Jewish and it is uh, Levitical laws. And the other one is New Testament. Pentecost is spoken of in the Old Testament, but we also say Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came. And the Bible says that. So I don't know which to assign to what of the four. There are four events. I don't know which is called what, and I could argue in favor of each one being called a different thing based on verses we find in the Bible. So that would be very interesting for somebody to work out those four uh, things. This is not a true statement I found on the Internet, so you have to be careful when you go on the Internet. The word Pentecost is first mentioned in the New Testament's Acts of Apostles. It simply is not true. Pentecost was mentioned, like I showed you back here, in Leviticus, Feast of Pentecost. Now, did somebody mistranslate Pentecost to being Feast of Shavuot? I don't know. That's my dilemma right here as I work through this. This has holds the key to our Pentecost, and many believe that we're going to be raptured on Pentecost. And, oh, Pentecost passed. Oh, let's push the calendar out further to make the Pentecost further out. Well, how about we just go on the first Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit came down and uh, and uh, that was the first section of that Pentecost when Jesus went on the cross, wave sheaf offering. And the those people that rose with him went to heaven. Boom. First Pentecost. done. how about our Pentecost is the second one that the Holy Spirit has been here saving people through all this time. And we go on the second Pentecost, which I said was on. I'm going to go look real quick, which I said was on uh, July 24th, the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av. This would be quite the day for the Jews because they will know it's the, I don't know if they know it's the 9th of Av on July 24th or not, but the 9th of Av um, being second Pentecost, I put wheat up there. But I'm not quite certain that that's not barley up there. I don't, I don't know how to over, I think it, honestly, first Pentecost would be barley and wheat. Second Pentecost would be barley and wheat because they overlap and they're very close. The, the, uh, the harvest times of these two different crops from fall and spring aren't very far apart by, I think it's weeks. It's not that far. So, and like I've said many times in past videos, I don't think the tribulation saints are going to be here for three and a half years. God's diverting his attention back to the Jew for seven years. I think that the tribulation saints are going to see the rapture and drop to their knees and they will have to die. Uh, to go to heaven after that point. The only living that go to heaven are the uh, bride. All right. Grape harvest, olives. I already did all that. First week. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was talking with Kevin Spinebreaker and asking him a question about this uh, women dancing out in the field. You heard me put a video of his on. And I, he said, there is a similar day within our tradition to be of celebrate on the 15th day of Av. It is a day when young unmarried women are permitted to approach men. This is the only day of year in Jewish customs where a woman can ask a man to marry them. And this is on to be of. So that's very interesting on the 15th. And uh, I think that's July 31st on, I believe they, yeah, that's July 31st, which he says is very similar to what we have as Valentine's Day. That's if you use the moon, 147.5 days is, is how many revolutions the moon would take in five months. You just simply can't get to that 150 days and 153 days. Uh, leprosy. I, I don't know why I, did. I keep forgetting that word leprosy. So I, I, I took a picture of it. Now, if you start your year, I want to show you why I start the year where I do. Uh, if you want to start your year somewhere else, that's fine. But I'm going to caution you on the story that God has written in the heavens on March the 16th, the day of equal parts, this is where the sun will be in 2024. On March the 16th, 
2024, it's the same picture. I just showed you where Aquarius is. It, it, we are now in the age of Aquarius. We are going into the age of Aquarius right now. This is what happens during the thousand years in the age of Aquarius. On March 16th in the year 2031, this is where the sun will be. Now, this is after the end of the tribulation. That's where the sun will be. It will begin to go, or it has already begun. This it, We just began the, year, the age of Aquarius just this year. Um, again, we are in the year 2024 on the Gregorian calendar, but we are in the 2023 Jubilee cycle, which will end on September the 15th or Tishri 1. Here we are, March 16th, 2031. That's when tribulation will end. Here we are on March 16th, 3031. That's where the millennium will end. That's where the sun will be. It will have transversed through that water. If your calendar does not have the sun making it through the outpouring of Jesus on this planet during those seven uh, thousand year millennium where Jesus is in, in charge, then there's something wrong. This is where the sun should be at the end of the thousand years. This is where the sun would be if you try to start the year on the equinox. It will still be in the water. Still kind of a good argument that that might be accurate. Not going to uh, throw it out. But if you try to start your year on April the 8th, because, you know, that's when an, a, a, uh, uh, a sign happened that the uh, elephant top over the United States and say, oh, well, and we're also going to start the year there which, by the way, there was no sliver on that day. It didn't happen until the, April the 10th. But this is where the sun will be. He'll totally take away the story of God. It won't work. This right here will not happen if you use any other date. And again, the equinox, possibly you could say that, but the water's still pouring out, you know, at this time. So the only one for me is when it is finished right here. It's already made it through. So anyway, all right, I don't know how long that was. So I had a lot to say. I'm alive. Everything's fine. John 6, 44. Nobody comes to the Father unless the Father draw him. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know. And you don't need to tell anybody. Accept the Lord into your heart. Um, we're out of time. We're running out of time. I don't know the rapture day. I'm not giving you a thousand days and, the, and then the final dates. I don't think we can be here by September the 15th. I really don't. Uh, Tishri 1. I don't think we can. Uh, go through uh, any calendar you want to use. doesn't matter. Uh, whatever day you want to start at the head of the year, just make certain that the biblical days that God gave us for the flood uh, do line up like they do on this one. And where they land is important. So uh, that's it. That's all. Jesus Christ, that's it. That's all. Accept him today. Go to heaven today. Accept him tomorrow. Go to uh, heaven in the tribulation, well, I mean, tomorrow's not the tribulation, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, do it, do it now. Don't wait. Do it now. Don't be uh, like this, you know, uh, recognizing, oh, yes, I made a mistake. Well, we've been warning you. Well, I know you have, but I didn't believe you. Well, now you're paying the consequences. Yeah, I know. Why do I have to pay these consequences? Because you didn't listen in the first place. So now's the time. Accept the Lord. Throw everything else off, all your works, and just come to him. Naked. Come to him naked with nothing to offer. So, all right. Repo Man 64. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for the future people who will see these videos. Chat with you again later.